Hi, this is Mark Wiltshire. Thanks for choosing again to listen to the Explore Finland radio show. I wanted to take a little bit of time this week just to thank a few people for the comments that I've received via social media, through the website, and various various different places. But um, I heard from Kurt, who said he really likes the show and likes the way that I'm explaining the, the small aspects of everyday Finnish life. And that's exactly what I'm trying to do, uh, show other other sides of life in, in Finland other than, than just Santa Claus. Uh, and I heard from Jokka, who's uh, involved in a, a project that will be opening in nearby Korika, in summer 2015, and we've exchanged a few messages about maybe going there and uh, and visiting that uh, sometime later this year. And then there was Stuart. Thanks, Stuart, for your comments, uh, who seems to have now got the taste or the idea of, uh, of wanting to try a Finnish sauna after listening to episode six last week. So um, it's great to know that, that you guys are, are listening, that you're liking what I'm doing, and, you know, thanks very much for, for taking a ch- the, the time to let me know. In this week's episode, you'll hear a conversation that I recorded a couple of weeks ago where I joined Marianne Holma here in Seinioki. She's a a city guide for Seinioki and does guided tours around the iconic Alva Alto centre. We'll learn more during the episodes about who Alva Alto was, but suffice to say that he was one of the, the most famous Finnish designers and architects and... We spent one morning walking around the Alto Centre and uh, we were talking for so long that I've decided to split the conversation into two parts. So this week you'll hear us talk about the origins of the centre and then we go and visit the town hall and the uh, iconic Lakodin Risti church. Um, and then next week we'll go and, and talk, walk, walk and talk around the theatre and the libraries here in, in Seinioki. So let's head over now to my conversation with Marianne. I'm here in the Seinioki City Hall now with Marianne Holma. She works here in Seinioki now as a city guide, uh, previously been an uh, English teacher, and she's going to explain to us about the Alva Alto Centre here in Seinioki. So, Marianne, thank you for agreeing to, to talk us around here today. Thank you. It was a pleasure to, to come here. Uh, and where are, we, where are we standing now? We are now in the city hall upstairs here and looking into the uh, council, council meetings chamber. Yeah, okay. There's, there's yes. rows, of, um, rows of chairs and tables in, yeah. a, in a sort of semicircle shape around a, a lectern at the, at the front where somebody maybe sits and stands and they have the, the council meetings. Yeah, and the council meeting chamber is actually a very um, original type of uh, chamber okay. because it's asymmetrical and there, there's history, story behind the lamps and and you can see that Alto line, Alto means something in Finnish so it's a wave, a wave in the ocean for the, example. The word Alto means wave and it's mm. also the, the surname of Alva Alto who designed this place and that's the reason that we're Mm. talking today because of this whole centre part of Seinioki. And now we are looking at a model of this Alva Alto ecclesiastical, administrative and cultural centre. And um, Alva Alto was born in Kuortane, not far from from, uh, Seinioki, about 40 kilometres from here. And maybe that was one of the reasons that Seinoki had him as the designer of of these six different buildings. Uh, In 1951, there was a competition to design a new church to this area. We have, or we had at that time already, a church in Törneva, about four kilometers from here. But as the population population started building or lived already in this area, so uh, the, uh, the church or the parish wanted to get a new church here as well. Am I right in thinking that the 
that the people who lived in this area, originally it was around Ternava, rather than what we now think of mm-hmm. as Senioki Centre. Yeah, that's yeah. true. That's okay. true. Yeah. And it is a beautiful church there, but it's a lot smaller than the, than the uh, Lathod yes. and Christi Church here in the, in the centre. Okay, so um, Alvarado won that competition for the church and the Paris Centre situated in front of the church. And uh, the bells in the church were tolled for the first time um, in 1960, the same year as Senegi became a town. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. And that bell tower, 65 meters high, it's a good landmark of Senegi. I don't know, we are starting or have started building higher buildings if you can see it from all over around St. Okay, but you can you still can at the moment when you're mm. coming in from on the from the the, the main roads out of town mm. heading towards town it's still certainly one of the one of the, the, the first things ones. that you see yeah, there. yeah, yeah. for sure okay and um, then there was another competition in 1957 for for this city hall and and the library the theatre and the offices building. So Alvarado uh, got the um, right to, to design the, the rest of the buildings as well. The, the interesting thing is that they're clearly, they all have a, they all have his touch to them, but all the buildings are different, dif- different look, dif- uh, different um, shapes. It's, it's all very... Um, each one is very u- individual. Mm. Yes, they are unique. Yes, that's true. And this city hall, it became ready in in, in uh, 1962, so two years after Senyuki became a town. And he used, outside this building, he used first uh, these porcelain or ceramic mm. rods and they are really nice to look at from the outside it the color differs with the light yeah okay a bit yes. like the ocean depending yeah. what the light yeah. shines on it shows mm-hmm. I, I always thought this building was black oh, okay. but it's not is it no no it's it's blue yeah, yeah. my wife mentioned this to me a few years ago and i thought oh <laughs> and, and actually where we are now we can see the light yeah. outside is not not very bright, but mm, um, there's true. some snow and it's it's giving a, a, a quite a quite white kind of light. And it's clearly it's a blue, very dark blue tile out there. And Alvarado said that Senegi will have uh, of, of, uh, room for offices for the next 50 years, but we've had offices around the town uh, quite soon after this became ready. And that wing there, the mayor of Senyoki got his apartment there. So, so you can yes, see okay. maybe a balcony there. Yes, the yes, okay. Of the yeah. balcony there. But there are offices, and just one mayor lived there some time. Okay, and the next building was this um, library. Yes. Municipal. Library of Senyoki, and it's uh, very many people say that it's the pearl of this Aldo Center. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, and you can see the uh, the roof there as well now. So the roof resembles an open book, as you can see. Maybe ah, I see. Yeah, I, while I was looking down on it, it also looks a little bit like a, a seashell. Ah, when you're looking down mm-hmm. on, a, on a shell, but also, yeah, like the pages of a book fanning, fanning right. out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay, mm-hmm. that's nice. So he had lots of symbolisms in his buildings. And in, inside, it's, it's uh, a fan-like or fan shape. Okay. And maybe as we visit one or two of these rooms, we can talk about the the design side of some of these because I, I was reading that it, it's not just a building mm-hmm. that he designed, mm-hmm. it was everything that That's went into true. the building yeah, as well. Yeah. So. Okay, and then the next one is this parish centre and you know it's it's like a, a square 
in front of the church, and it's a terraced yes. square there, and it's designed so that you can uh, or they can have services outside there as well. Okay, and the next one was this um, state offices building, 1968, and um, it used to be owned by the state, but uh, it's been in in the or oh, the, uh, the town of Seinjoki has owned it already more than 10 years now. And there used to be the poli police and yes. and the tax office as well. What's in there now? Because both the police station and the tax office have moved mm. to newer, probably bigger That's true. locations That's true. as the yes. town has, itself has grown. There are offices of the town at, right, the, at okay, the moment okay. too. And um, there's a a courtroom at that sort of ah, okay. <laughs> box there yes, yeah. <laughs> at the end of the at the other end of the and it's quite nice. I'm guessing well. that when this was all designed, Alva Alto had no idea how quickly the world was going to grow and how, how far no. Sayoki was going to grow as well. Yeah, so. yeah. It's always difficult to tell. Yeah. Even <laughs> even some experts don't know it. Okay, and so Alvarado was born in 1898, and we got this model a hundred years after his right, birth. Okay. Mm. Okay. So it's quite valuable, and it's been uh, traveling around the world. This, but, this but, it's, lot. but it's still in one piece, which is, it is, which is yes. good. It's a, well, what's the model itself made of? Is it wood or? I think it is. Yeah, it wood. looks, it looks yes, like a wooden, yes. a wooden uh, plan of this of this particular mm. cent area. Yeah, and. He designed this uh, theatre building when he was alive in 1969, but Seniki didn't build it, so uh, it, it's after his birth, it is his death. Okay. We got it, got it here. Does he have any other designs in his archive for buildings he was planning for here that maybe still might appear one day? Maybe. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, who knows? Who knows? Yeah. yeah, he he did a lot of uh, plans, designs, and the th uh, the theatre building was then inaugurated in 1987. So, uh, Alvar Alto, uh, architect office, and his wife Elisa right, okay. Alto went on with the okay. with the plans there. And the last uh, bit was this. Uh, square piazza as uh, this is sort of uh, uh, a square in between the uh, uh, surrounded city. by the walls mm. of the city hall that's right okay city hall and the library between there i don't know if i've ever been around there before i've never really been aware of it so mm -hmm. yeah um, yeah he wanted people to go there and and st stand and stay there and okay. lots of events there but it's not used so much. No, mm. okay. Mm. Uh, but, which is maybe why I haven't been yeah. there or heard about it. <laughs> yeah, I will, I will go and investigate when, mm. we, when mm. we finish talking. We've now crossed the road from the, the city hall and we're standing in the Lacodin Risti church. So, Marianne, over to you. So, Lacodin Risti means cross over the plains because this area, this south of Bosnia, is very plain, not no hills, yeah, although quite, we call them flat. mountains. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> flat, really. Yeah. Mm, yeah. So yeah. we have many mountains here too. Okay, but this church was inaugurated in 1960, and it consists of the tower, the bell tower, which is 65 meters high, and and a landmark of Saint Eoki. and. Just beneath, beside the, the bell tower, there's a little statue by Aalto. And um, next to it is the chapel that's covered with uh, black granite. And Alvar Aalto wanted it to be, the whole church to be covered with black granite. Okay, mm, so it could original. have been a black, a black mm. church. Mm. That would have been something. And it uh, resembles this church 
resembles a coffin, so it would have become <laughs> too, maybe too, um, not so inviting. Yeah, I think. yeah, it would be yeah, quite, yeah. quite dark and quite, then, mm, true. Yes, a place for a Halloween party rather than <laughs> a religious, <laughs> rather than religious ceremonies. Yeah. Um, okay. And this um, chapel is well fits about. 40, 50 people, and christenings and smaller weddings and other events. For example, Orthodox events there, because we don't have an Orthodox church here. So this but church is... when you is say Orthodox, you mean Lutheran? Oh, Catholic. Oh, Catholic. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is an uh, evangelic Lutheran church, and most Finns belong to to the church, Mm. to this church. The most important designal element in this chapel is is the painted or stained glass, you know, window. Uh, Stained glass window, yeah. Yeah, yeah, window. And um, there's a a stream of South Ostrobothnian Reverse or reverse, reverse are, are presented there, and it's blue too. But senior key blue again. Yes. Mm. And this church itself, it is a cathedral, like a cathedral, and in three aisles. Yes. You know there are the, these columns yes. here, and when you come from the entrance hall, you get a feeling that it's becoming going narrower to the altar and it is actually and and the ceiling is getting lower there okay. as well so, so that is that that's that kind of coffin shape again getting yeah. narrower from from one end to the to the true. other yes yes it's true and as well as the the actual building itself um what else was uh, alva alta involved in designing there yeah, he he designed everything. Okay. He, he always did that for his his buildings. So it very much so. wasn't just designing the building, but you know everything down to um, the the pews, the light fittings, the light switches. We were That's just right. talking before and door handles, and and all all that was necessary. He was one of the leading functionalists in in the whole world. Yeah. He used to be a professor in, in uh, Massachusetts as well for three years and and um, an academician and of course architect so he had lots of lots of <laughs> different different uh, abilities okay. together with yeah. his uh, w- wives two wives. Uh, he married another architect when his uh, first wife, Aino Alto, died. So let's have a look at the altar here. Um, Alvaraldo used Italian marble here, and it's in the bowel pulpit, and, and the altar itself, the reels there as well. And we are happy to have them here inside, not outside like in Finlandia house in Helsinki and there were, there's lots of symbolism here in the church for example the, the empty wooden cross in the altar no altar piece there no painting in the church Alto said that it's enough with the lights coming from the different gla- uh, windows up and and uh, down in the altar there. It is a very bright church, mm. isn't it? I, I mm. guess that's the white colour inside, but also the light that comes in through the through the windows. That's right. So he he had said that God Himself paints the altar piece with uh, uh, shadows and lights. Okay, that's mm. nice. nice. Mm. And there's something um, unique about his design for a cross as well. I, I noticed this by looking at one or two pictures of some of his other churches. That it's quite a distinctive cross. Hmm. And the empty wooden cross uh, symbolises the resurrection of 
Christ. Uh, the, the fact that it's empty rather yeah. than having a depiction of, right. of Christ mm. on there. Yeah, mm. okay. And the, the shape of it, it, it seemed to me that the, the design of it, the, the top piece of the cross, was much shorter than you see true. sometimes. Yeah, yeah. I don't know the meaning of that. No, it, but it's, it is, yes. It, it's his design, I guess. True, yes, yes. yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. And um, the windows, there are seven windows on both sides of the church. And number seven is a holy number in especially Jewish uh, religion. And the windows... They look like an, um, a, a seven branch candelier when the lights are on in, in winter time when it's dark outside. Okay. And there are seven lamps on both sides of the, of, of the church as well. Again, the lamps, the lamps in the church and the lamps we saw in the city hall have all been designed by Arto. They all have a very distinctive look, all slightly different to in each building, but yeah, all yeah. clearly his design. That's true, that's true. And he was very particular about the light so that it won't hurt your, finger, your her eyes when you sing or, or read something in the, in the pews. There. Clear enough to read, but not too yeah, bright to, to be dazzling. Mm-hmm. Okay. Really fine attention to detail in, in right. every aspect mm-hmm. of the design. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And this is a big church. When uh, in 1950s there weren't so many people living in Seinoki yet, so uh, 1,200 people can be seated in the, in the pews. And from here in the altar, you can see that the pews get higher towards the entrance hall. I'd never realised, I've been in the church a few times for a wedding and the concerts and things like that, and I'd not realised that. That is the thing, you always try to, it, when you arrive, you try to get as close to the front so you can see as much as possible. It's not exactly like a football stadium, it's so no, steep, no. but it's interesting to know there yeah, is some... Yeah. Uh, it's about 50 centimetres. Yeah. Mm, that's right. And um, so Senuki wanted, Senuki Parish wanted to get the bishop's seat here in Senuki at that time, but we didn't get it. It went to uh, the nearer town, Lapua. Oh, right, okay. But being stubborn South Ostrobothnians, <laughs> we didn't want to make it any smaller, or they didn't want to make it any smaller, but build it big like this. And there's a healthy local rivalry between Senioki and Lapua <laughs> as well, isn't there? <laughs> yeah, it? yeah. Which exists mm. to this day. So, so um, well, it's good to have a good concert hall for big concerts as well when we have this this big church here. And act, actually, I wrote something on my website just a week or two ago about uh, a concert at the coming up at the church featuring the, the band Soft Engine that were in the Eurovision Song Contest in 2014, and they're doing a, a concert there with the Loritus Children's Choir. Um, so that's that's one of the one of the forthcoming events that are Mm. In, in this church and uh, if you go to my website then you can see the, the article I wrote there and a few links to, uh, to some of those taking part Yeah, it's a very nice sound this, uh, this chorus has lots of kids singing there uh-huh. Yeah, sing, yeah, singing and also dancing, and, mm. and there's, they've even got one or two songs where one of the one of the children is rapping in there. So it's a really modern, really modern choir. It's uh, not what people maybe immediately think of when you say a children's choir. It's something a bit yes. different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and um, so Alvaraldo designed everything, even the the, the organs. Right, the okay, organ, and they're, they're yeah. up, up, up in the balcony there, yeah. Yeah, uh, and he was very particular about the stops there, so the look, how, how they are grouped. Yeah. So there are even a few false pipes, so they, just for the look of it. Okay, mm. <laughs> that, that, that's interesting. No, mm. no that, that's all form over function because they don't work, they just make it look that's right. how he wanted it to mm. look. Okay. Mm. And there are seats for, for a, choir, a chorus as well uh, on the balcony. 
and the the pews they are made of North Karelian red hearted pine. Okay. As you can see, they are really, really long or tall <laughs> trees. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. are made of, and um, the the floor is covered with uh, tiles, and they are not similar tiles. Everyone is not exactly the like yeah. the other okay. other one. So um, Aldo had said that uh, we parishes aren't not exactly the same so they can be they can differ some, well. some of the symbolism there yeah, even if it's yeah, something quite, quite small as yeah. well okay. mm. so where where shall we head to now we've been in the city hall we've been in the church which other building would you like to to show us around I would like to show you the library, Aldo's library, but uh, unfortunately there's renovation going on still, and it will be hopefully ready this spring okay. sometime. And it's said it to be to be the pearl of the whole Alvarado Center. It's a fan-like uh, building, and we we had a look at it. On the model, yes, that's right. Yeah. So. But the next building will be the theatre building, okay. the newest building of this centre. Let's let's head let's head over there. So that's part one of the tour of the Alva Alto Centre. Thanks to Marianne for taking us round. Remember, if you enjoy the show and you want to show your support, of course, comments through through the website and social media are are welcome. But also, if you want to. Take a minute to rate and review the show on iTunes, on Stitcher Radio or Feedburner. That will certainly help me raise the profile of the show and uh, you know, reach, a, reach a wider audience. You can also subscribe to my mailing list so that every time I release a new show, the show notes will be emailed to you directly. And please help spread the word amongst your, your friends and family on, on your choice of, of social network. You, you'll find me and the show on Facebook on Google+, Plus, on Twitter, and also on Instagram. So plenty of choice there for you. And also, if there's a subject that you want me to cover in future episodes, then, you know, contact me and, and let me know. I'd be pleased to, to hear from you. So until next time, thank you very much for listening, and uh, we'll see you again on the Explore Finland radio show. Bye. <laughs>